One of the communities that's on the bank of the Mohawk is called the Stockade, and it floods on a fairly regular basis. The floodwaters of the Mohawk may rise 15 or 20 feet in a given winter due to the ice jamming. So one of our projects for the Natural Disasters class is to look at the effects of the ice jamming and actually how the ice has scarred the trees along the banks of the Mohawk. So for this project, we go to the stockade and also across the river to Scotia and measure the heights of tree scars on the trees to figure out how high the ice jamming went in the flooding events. We spent time at the Niskayuna water and wastewater treatment plants, two different stops, and we were trying to understand how do engineers build systems in order to keep our water both clean when we first remove it from the groundwater resources, but also when we put the wastewater back into the natural environment or natural system. We spent time with the, the city engineer and we spent time with the engineers on, on campus trying to learn those things. Another problem or another uh, project that we do in ENS 100 is trying to understand the dynamics of stream flow and we do this by stream gauging at the Potterkill, at the confluence of the Potterkill and the Mohawk River. One of the challenges in that class is being able to take data in the field and then come back to the lab and use that data and those observations in Excel to try and come up with meaningful conclusions about the discharge that we're measuring and compare it to previous data. We take the students down to the plotter kill and get them familiar with the different landforms that are in that area. And we get to see a number of slopes that are in various degrees of failure. So in this project we're studying slope failure, slope instability, and one way we do this is by actually taking tree cores and looking at how the instability of the slopes has affected the growth of the trees. We look at how old the trees are, when they start to be affected by the slope instability. So then we can reconstruct geomorphic processes that have been happening in the plotter kill over the last 50 or 60 years, specifically how the slopes have started to creep and even fail in the recent past. In another class that I teach, Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology, we take a number of field trips around the state and also to bordering states in New England. These are field trips that are usually on a Saturday or Sunday. They're all day field trips. We get up at 6 a.m. and we go till the sun sets. And one of the trips we took this year was down to Dutchess County uh, near Poughkeepsie, New York. And the purpose of this trip was to look at what happens to muds or sediments about 400 million years ago that were subjected to increases in temperature. We looked at a number of different outcrops, made about 10 stops, and we were seeing the sequences of different mineral assemblages with increasing temperature. This is a really great opportunity for the students to learn about the Barovian sequence. It's something that we discussed in class and entails how muds and shales change, the mineral assemblages change over time time as they're subjected to increasing pressures and temperatures. That's cool. Look at it. It's like a sheen to it. Alright, let's see here. No, I don't want it here. Grab this one. Alright, this will be decent. We can get a section out of this. You can still you can see it still has some of that micaceous sheen to it. A little bit of sort of a luster. Fine. But yeah, definitely you don't see as much green. There's probably still some chloride in here, but uh, Sam, wherever Sam is, is probably right in that there is a higher quartz component in here, and that might also account for the larger green size. Another trip we took in our petrology class was up north to the Adirondacks. They're only about two and a half hours away and they're a great example of mountain building events that have happened millions of years ago. And they're a great place to study some of the history of geology in North America. They're very old mount, uh, mountain range and today they're about 4,000 feet and mostly rounded hills, but in the past they rivaled the Himalayas in terms of their height and their jagged and scope, but through time they've been eroded and weathered and so they appear as they do today. So that's one thing that we can look at with the Adirondacks is the geomorphic history, the processes that have eroded them down. Something else that's really interesting about the Adirondacks is their composition. 
The composition of the Adirondacks is mostly anorthosite, which is fairly unique since it's the same composition as our moon. So we take our students to the Adirondacks and they get to see really interesting rock types and something that they can't see just anywhere and it's in our backyard.